following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Don't adjust your screen. There is nothing wrong. You are about to enter a world where the very concept of time is rendered obsolete by the sheer power of entertainment. You're about to enter the Bogus Hour. Welcome to this episode of The Bogus Hour. Tonight's guest is a musician, a harmonica player, songwriter. You're going to love him. His name is Nick David, and his band is Mr. Nick and the Dirty Tricks. Well, welcome, my friend, Mr. Nick David, of Nick and the Dirty Tricks, the band. My pleasure to be here. So uh, we're going to find out about, uh, first of all, tell us about Mr. Nick and the Dirty Tricks. Who are you? Well, uh, we're, uh, we're a four-piece band. Uh, we're a blues band. We play uh, a, lot of, a lot of Chicago blues and a lot of early jump blues. Um, you know, we move around a lot. We do some soul music. We do some R&B music. But, you know, our roots are in Chicago blues and, and, and jump blues. You know, we do everything from, you know, Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf and Little Walter and Magic Sam to, uh, you know, that's the Chicago stuff to the, you know, the, the jump stuff is like, you know, Winoni Harris, Big Joe Turner, Louis Jordan, um, that kind of stuff. You said four-piece band, what does it consist of? So it's bass, guitar, drums, vocals, and harmonica, and then we all sing. Oh, so, okay. Um, <clears throat> you are the vocals and harmonica. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do the most. I do most of the singing for yeah. the band, but uh, the, also the guitar player and the drummer are both really good singers, and they all they both have fronted their own bands. Yeah. So it's kind of like a for a New Hampshire band, we're kind of like a kind of like a conglomerate of like a like a New Hampshire supergroup, <laughs> <laughs> a New Hampshire blues supergroup. New Hampshire supergroup. <laughs> That's, right. That's funny. Yeah, because uh, for years, <clears throat> Gus, the guitar player, had a band called Lonely Gus and the One Night Stand. Oh yeah. Um, and they had they had one record, but it was really good. I still listen to it all the time. Really good record. And then Rick, uh, for years, he was he was the singer. He played he played drums and sang for a band called Rum Boogie. Uh, yes, they were certainly uh, I remember seeing that name all over the place. They were around forever. They were around for like, I don't think, nine years. Yeah. And that, that, that band, Rum Boogie, came from the disbanding of The Movers, uh -huh. which was around forever and ever. You know, The Movers was a band that was a, was a big band, was a big horn band. Yeah. You know, they went to the Boston Blues Challenge. They won the Boston Blues Challenge. They went to the International Blues Challenge. They won the International Blues Challenge. And then when The Movers... Uh, you know, they went through a couple different vocalists, and then Rick was the last singer for that band, The Movers. And then it kept the core group of, you know, the piano player who played harmonica, piano player, harmonica player, guitar player, and bassist, and then Rick, the three of them. And then they had a, they had a sax player for a while called Mark the Shark. Nice. I remember his last name. But that was, that's what Rum Boogie was, and they were around forever. So the, both those guys were, you know, fronted their own bands for years. And I have, I mean, I've, Three Rum Boogie records I still listen to all the nice. time too, so it's great to be in a band with guys that I'm that are good friends of mine and I'm fans of sure. their music, you know. So, uh, so there are a couple of more questions. Uh, what year did you actually become? I don't want to say a professional, but what year did you really begin singing in earnest? Um, well, can you, I, can you pin it to a year, or is it or is it a process? I can't really pin it to a year. I can tell you I was in my first band when I was like 12. Oh, okay. And it was a it was a hard rock and then and, and you know it was a hard rock band. Um, so before you go on, where where did you grow up? I, partially here in New Hampshire, yeah. and partially on the West Coast. Oh, okay. I lived for about 15 years um, in Oregon. Oh, wow. And. Um, 
So, which is home to a unique music scene in and of itself. There's a really incredible blues scene in Oregon, a really incredible blues scene there. And is that where you is that where you started your interest in blues? Well, partially, yes, because there was so much good live blues out, for sure. But yeah. but before that, both my parents have really good taste in music. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. And so, you know, I used to I used to go out and you know grab a you know James Cotton record and uh, throw it on yes. the, you know. Yeah, when I, I learned when James I was, Cotton was my brother had. Yeah. I can't remember this. Whatever the it, it was. Yeah, it was hundred percent cotton. It was, it was an one track. of the first. Yeah, it was one of the first records I remember pulling out hundred yeah. percent cotton and one more putting that on and. And 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 uh, you know my parents just had really good taste in music, so I yeah, grew up around that. Yeah, my folks love Creedence, so I always. What's that? My folks love Creedence Clearwater Revival. Oh, nice. So I yeah. had some good, some good music growing up too. So your folks had good taste in music, so you so you got to learn and like the blues. And when you started to perform, you started out as a rock dude. Yeah, I started garage, out as a, you know because I was a garage punk. <laughs> it was all cover tunes, yeah. you know. It was just. You know, we did whatever. We were, Come on, let's hear the we're classic. Doing, oh my we're God, we're doing classic like classic covers. We're doing like Dokken and oh, man. Ozzy Osbourne, and <laughs> you know, I was 12 years old. It was, you know, um, that's funny. And then I, you know, I had a few more bands that were all kind of rock bands, some original rock bands. You know, up until somewhere around, I think I was around 20 or 21 years old. Um, I joined a band called Chickenhead. Chickenhead. They were all from Keene. They all went to Keene. They were all. Uh, they were Which all, is a James Cotton song, right? Well, it's a Fenton Robinson song. Oh, but okay. It's, James but it's, Cotton. But James Cotton did a made really it, good. Made really, it big. It, that was probably the most noticeable version of it. But Fenton nice. Robinson is the guy that wrote it, and and um, Fenton Robinson. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's, that's good, a good guy to know. You know that. Good chunk that's of pretty, that's there. pretty good. So yeah, I was in a band called Chickenhead for for uh, for a few years, and we did. You know, it was a blues-based band. Um, you know, we did. Uh, our guitarist was a big kind of Santana head, so yeah. we were the on the rockier side of blues stuff. But uh, you know, I really got to do a lot of the blues stuff that I never, I never got to do in a rock and roll band. And it's, you know, I think it's the music that is my voice is best suited for. Yeah, you got a um, phenomenal, you know, phenomenally memorable voice. It's just got a, you got a really good range, and you, you, it's it's a nice voice to listen to. You know, Thanks, some people man. have good voices, and you've got one of them. So thank uh, you. In a, in a, uh, in a friendly way. I appreciate I, I, that. I, man. I, I, I enjoy listening to you. Um, so, uh, what do you, uh, what do you think is the big difference between between blues and uh, blues and rock? And why did, why does blues speak to you more than, than than standard rock? I mean, I, you know, I know that you 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 do cover a broad range of stuff, but like you said, you you tend to focus more on blues. And what is it about it that you find? Um. You know, I mean, it's always been the music that I've loved the most. You know, it's always been the stuff that has hit me that has had the most kind of um, spiritual impact, yeah. the most uh, emotional impact. Yeah, on and that's me. the stuff that you can't really, it's kind of tough to put a finger on it and explain exactly why something is yeah. that you like. It's it, just, right. It's like, I, why I do you like pizza? Yeah. I don't know. I really <laughs> love pizza. <laughs> Pizza's good. I would know? imagine food analogy is a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably happen a few more times before we're done here today. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, uh, let's see here. And so now how about the harmonica there? Cause like that, a cheeseburger. I've always loved harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> that's a more like a song. Just waited, just waited. Like just waited. That. <laughs> that just everything okay. from here on out is just going to be... <laughs> Cheesecake. Uh, I haven't had lunch yet, so <laughs> I haven't we'll either. Have... I'm sorry. We're gonna go eat after. <laughs> we'll have to end this conversation. Uh, that's right. I'm done. We're done. We're <laughs> out of here. Um, so, when did you start playing the harp, the mouth so harp, the harmonica? I, I started playing a little bit when I was, even when I was in the rock bands. I still, I, I still, I had harmonica. I wasn't really that good at it, and I, you know, I kind of learned to bend the notes a little bit and do a couple of little tricks when I was when I was younger, and you know, we played it out a little bit. A little magic when, dick. When I, yeah, uh, I, I like Dick a lot. Uh, Magic Dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those of you who don't know, from Jay Giles' band. He's uh, <laughs> Wham My Jamma. That's what, uh, that's, what uh, that's if, if people that don't know blues, they come up and request one of three things. They either go, can you play Blues Traveler? And I go, no. No. And they go, can you play Blues Brothers? And I go, no. <laughs> and those four things. Can you play Stevie Ray Vaughan? Right. And I go, no. 
or can you play Whamma Jamma? Right. <laughs> that's the, that's well, the first the, one. Can you play Whamma Jamma? And I go, the, the funny nah, thing I go, we just never learned it. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a knock on that. It just, uh, it's not a knock on any of that stuff. It's sure. Just, uh, we well, just the thing with the Blues Brothers is that, you know, it's just a great, they're a great cover band. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, the, the band itself was, was, was one of the most monstrous bands that were assembled as far as I'm concerned. I mean, that is a, the, the, yes. the guys in that band were an incredible amount of, 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 of talented guys there. The, the, yeah, the, the band was incredible. I mean, you people, know. Have, people don't realize that. I, I, I didn't realize it when I liked the Blues I loved John Belushi as a kid. So I like that was kind of my intro into that music, and it's and it's kind of a back their way. It's basically a yeah, very we had Steve Jordan on drums, you had Steve Cropper, sure Steve Cropper you know, and Donald Don were Dunn. half of the yeah, yeah, half Dunn, of the uh, uh, Booker T and the MGs. MGs. That's right. You know, um, you got so Paul Schaefer, you before got we Mac go on, Murphy. Uh, yeah, who else? And, and then the horn section, I think, was a bunch of guys from Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yeah. Um, so before we go on, we're going to listen to, uh, or, or actually, we're going to actually see a clip of you performing uh, a tune. So the, yeah, this song. So this song's called Stripper, and it's kind of a it's kind of a, a jokey kind of song. It's kind of a funny song. Uh, it's a song that I wrote that I I wanted to give it to Gus. I wrote it a long time ago, and I never recorded it because I never. Felt like I felt like it was too kind of kitschy. Right. Um, but, but Gus Carlson had the band Lonely Gus and One Night Stand for years, and all, all his stuff on his records are real kind of kitschy stuff. It's all funny. It's all tongue in cheek. You know, it's all kind of every. It's all it's great music, but it's all fun and funny. Yeah. And so I never was going to record it, and then we came up with such a good version of it when we were when we were starting to to put this record together. Yep. But I said, let's do it. So we put it on the record, but this is on this is on our record, Oh Wow, and this is from uh, a blues festival I do every February in, uh, in Salisbury Beach called Blue Ocean, well, Blue Ocean Music Hall. I, do, I put on a, a great blues venue. festival every year um, called the New England, New England Winter Blues Festival, and this is from that a couple of years ago. All right, let's take a look and a listen, and we'll be back. All right. Well, this next song, that was an original tune. That one's on the record. The first one's on the record. This next one's on the record. This one right here, this is a song about what might happen to you if you don't do the right thing in the face of adversity. And you end up dating women of a certain profession. That's right, nurses. Those damn nurses always breaking up everybody's home. Her body was divine, but I'm glad that it's not mine. I'll never. Stripper again.
Stripper uh, from your album All Wow. That's right. And that uh, there's a little backstory to the production of your album. This is this your first album under under this incarnation of the band? Uh, no. Well, we did we did one more. We did one before that. That was just uh, it was just kind of um, we recorded it at at my guitar player's house. It wasn't you know it was there were some good moments on it, yeah. but it wasn't a really well produced record. This record was done right. All of it was done right. It was produced by Curtis Salgado, who was one of my heroes growing up, one of the best soul blues singers on the planet. Um, and he was also, going back to the Blues Brothers, he was the inspiration for the whole Blues Brothers thing. Like, they right. took so much of their bag from what he did. Like, their whole, all the songs they did were songs that he used to do. And, you know, even right down to, like, the rap and, like, uh, you know, you're going to walk a mile for a camel, oh. you're going to make like a Chesterfield and satisfy. And I pulled out my big Jim Beam, and to her surprise, it was every bit as hard as my Canadian. That whole, all that whole rap and that, that That's was all his. Curtis's. Oh, wow. So John Belushi called him up, he goes, hey, man, can you tell me that whole rap that you do? Tell me that whole rap. And he wrote the whole rap down, and he did it like verbatim. So Said, all I don't that stuff know? They, they was took that the from, tune? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know, right. So all that stuff they took from Curtis, and so they like the first record they did, Briefcase Full of Blues. They dedicated that to Curtis. Right. And yeah, because I think in the there's a book too by by Mitch Glazer, and and they, they mention the Salgado as the inspiration. Oh yeah. In the, in the preface. And the, uh, and the actually the Cab Calloway character in the movie 
named Curtis. Oh, which is okay, yeah, yeah. The named custodian Curtis. Curtis, right, right. So, so that's Curtis Salgado. He's the guy, that, it's the first record that he ever produced was our record, Oh Wow. Great. We were really lucky to get, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a good friend of mine, and he... And he's he, actually, he was here recently, right, performing? Uh, he the came last out year, a couple maybe? years ago. Yeah. A couple, couple years ago, I flew him out here to do the the blues festival that I put on. Awesome. Um, and then, so before that, I'd, I'd phone him out here um, to produce the record. Uh, he lives in Portland, yeah. Portland, Oregon. And he still, he still performs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in his, he's in his uh, 60, well, 61, 62, somewhere in that. Which in, somewhere right depends in that on area. The, depends on the, the uh, genre, but sometimes that's old for a musician. <laughs> yeah, well, he sounds as good as ever, man. He, that dude can sing his yeah. butt off. It's great. You I know? love people that have, that have that ability to... Just doesn't seem. It seems like a time was Tony uh, Bennett's like that. Like, yeah, the guy's in his one of the eighties yeah, or something like 80s. that. It still He's sounds out there doing it. Yeah, golden. Uh, so you mentioned uh, Cab Calloway, and you do a, a musical thing that Cab Calloway does. You can do scatting, right? Uh, well, yeah, Although, I, I do a little of, bit of that. For all of you, <laughs> you filthy internet people, scatting is a, is a musical term. It's not something you'd find. Don't Google it. Um, unless it's, you know, unless you're asking about music, um, but uh, yeah. So so there's a, I actually saw you recently, and there was there was some yeah, you I did do, some I, kind I, of. A... We do a song that was on the that we did on Oh Wow yeah. called Little Demon. Yeah, and it's a which is actually it's a screaming Jay Hawkins tune. Ah, okay, that explains the, it. The 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 just a, the chorus of it is the guys trying to to say how how mad he is, <laughs> and so you. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you're trying, trying to do that musically, you know, to build that, te that how how tense he is and angry he is. But, 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 that so you're somebody samming, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right. So I just channel whatever, you know. I let the I let the demon in on that sure. one. Sure. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, um, let's see here. Um, so uh, what did you release your album? It came out in 2012. Yep. Um, and we got, we got a lot of good air, airplay. We, you know, we hired a radio guy, the, like the main radio guy. He does all the, all the, all the big blues acts. He does whenever anybody does a, you know, Clapton does a blues record. He's the guy that, you know, he's, he does, he does Robert Cray. He yeah. does, um, you know, and he does everybody. And but we were lucky to, the guy's name's Todd Glazer. He's a, uh, he lives up in Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, wow. And he does it all from his, you know, his place sure. in Anchorage, Alaska. And he, he, he gets it all to the. To the uh, all the radio stations, so we got charted. You know, we were charted right. in the top top twenty or something um, for the record, and uh, it was you know it got a lot. We got a lot some good press from it. Uh, it was named one of the um, top twenty five records actually on the planet by the Alternate Root magazine. They do like they do all Roots music. Yep. And so they had all the records that they had for two thousand and twelve, and you know they picked that as one of the top 25 records period for 2012 so Sweet. It's, we're pretty proud of it you know it's not it's the it's the best thing i've ever done musically ever yeah um that's a great album you know it's thank you uh thank and i've you. listened to it many times and uh it, it's it's uh, nick's music that's in the intro his uh band from a previous iteration is the music in the intro to the show so yeah um he'd like a thank you in person yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, wrapping up here pretty quickly, uh, I usually do three questions. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down to two, and you got to get them in within like a, um, a short time. So, uh, what what do you consider your best your best show that you've ever done? Is there one that stands out as as <sighs> as, a, as, a, as you know the you know the Acme the the golden? Yeah, there's uh, there's it's kind of kind of hard to. We're gonna be hard to compete with this one. Um, there's a few. There's a few because I've gotten to play with some of my heroes, and so yeah. that's those are those are really big. But the one that stands out the most, I just kind of lucked into the gig. It was supposed to be Sugar Ray Norsey was supposed to do it, and then he couldn't do it. And then they tried to get Brian Templeton to do it. He couldn't do it. And then so I, they said, "Hey, man, we know this guy," and it ended up in my lap. And I ended up going over to Portugal. Um, oh wow. And we did this festival called the uh, the Avante Festival yep. in Seychelles, Portugal. We stayed in in Lisbon and did the and it was uh, like a hundred thousand people. It was totally insane. It was just this. I'd never seen that many people anywhere ever for yep. anything. I'd never been to a show that big in my life. So right. it was 
You know, and they treated us like rock stars. Sure. They carted us around, they fed us, they put yeah. us in a five-star hotel in Lisbon. And That's very you know, nice to be treated well. It was, because it was we, a really cool thing. Because you know, local was, music scenes aren't necessarily known for, you know, treating you like uh, kings. So, uh, uh, in, under, uh, in 15 seconds or so, uh, worst show that you can ever recall doing? Uh... There's probably many. Uh, no, there's a there's a litany of those, man. There's a lot, a lot of crap gigs, you know. Right. Any any gig that you go to where you're competing with 20 television screens right. and a pool table and right. you know video games and anything like that. Sure. Is, so uh, yeah, those are the kind of gigs. So we're gonna go uh, uh, and listen to you play a little bit of uh, harmonica for the end of the show. So I'm uh, gonna play us out uh, with a little bit of uh, a little bit of. Uh, the mouth harp. The old mouth harp. My friend, Nick All David. Right. All right. All right, we're going to do a little Jimmy Rogers here if we can. Marbles and chalk bought me a fine Cadillac man. Now I don't have to walk in the evening, baby. After the sun goes down. Women all tell me, babe, I'm the sweetest man in town. as fine as she could be I want the whole world to know she's on ride with me in the evening band after the sun goes down women now tell me babe I'm the sweetest man in town. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on The Bogus Hour, email us here at thebogushour at gmail.com. 
The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.